these all came from the flea market. And except for the little hatchet there in the back, I've done some restoration work on every single one of them. And if you take a look at them, I mean, I, I guess I could go over them case by case and show you. They all would seem to be worth more than what I paid. Uh, and I'll show you a trick in this, or explain a trick. Not really a trick, but just a technique for a restorative technique for old wooden handles. Things that you're likely to see at a flea market and think, that's junk. Uh, I'll show you the way that I bring them back. The classic case of handle deterioration is usually found in shovels. Not in my shovels, in other people's. It drives me crazy because a shovel that can give you a splinter is among one of life's great disappointments. So uh, the best thing to do is to keep your handles from ever getting bad enough to end up flea market quality in the first place. And you can do that by always putting a coat of oil on them. I said always, but it's not as tedious as it sounds. You just get some teak oil or some linseed oil. And you don't even have to clean your handle very well. Leave it dirty. It just adds to the character. That's all it takes. Look at that. Do this, I don't know, if I, on a shovel like this one that gets a lot of use over the season. I might, I might do it four times. But like I said, I despise the idea of a splinter from a tool that I'm using. My hands get enough abuse. Look, look at that. Easy peasy. So that easily establishes that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? But what about in the case of cure, when things went so bad and we have to fix them? Flea market tool. Come on, let's take a look. Step one, sandpaper. Big surprise, right? Yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of sanding when you get to an old piece of weathered wood, something that looks like it was cast away adrift at sea for a year. Wood gets dry and cracked and bleachy looking and it just, the thought makes me cringe what it'll do to my fingers, so sandpaper. Sand it first, get it smooth. Then blow it all out. Air compressor. Get all of those cracks exposed and see what you're working with. That's when you can use epoxy. Big surprise coming from me, right? Uh, I didn't used to do that. But I'm convinced epoxy is a, it's a great way to do it. If you don't want to, you can use liquid nails or regular wood glue. Everybody knows that trick. You smear wood glue all over it, sand it, and then it becomes as a wood filler. But I found that big cracks like these, it looks brutal, but it isn't. Uh, when you apply your heat gun to the wood, it will get nice and warm, and then you can just watch the epoxy. It will seep its way into the, the thinnest of cracks, and then, as it solidifies, it stabilizes all the wood fibers. It's sandable, and it always, it always maintains a certain elasticity to it. it. It's hard, but it's also soft enough that it doesn't split or crack exactly as a glass or plastic would. I'm sure it has some point where it does that, but it does a good approximation of something like a wood resin type material. But, as I said, fill it with epoxy and then sand it again and then you're ready to oil. That is pretty much what I've done with all of these. Very few of the wounds were bad enough to epoxy and if the wound goes the whole way through, forget it. If it's split the whole way through, you have to replace it. There's a limit that you'll come to understand and you don't want to exceed that limit. So this axe I picked up for something like four or five dollars and I had to rehang the head because it was wobbly. But I did manage to salvage the handle and I gave this a polish. 
uh, sanded it with a grinder with a flap disc sander. Did a little bit of file work here, but it's pretty sharp. Uh, I, try, I try to leave the patina on the metal. I like that. You sand it, the rust, until the bulk of the rust is gone. Let it become smooth, and then you can hit it with some WD-40 and a rag or vinegar if you want, but I don't usually do that simply because I don't like the smell. That little guy that just fell, I didn't do anything to it yet. Uh, I picked it up with another hatchet, I think for six dollars for the both of them, and this was the more valuable of the two. I haven't done anything to it because my Google searches, look how you can see the stamp, U.S. My Google searches suggest that this is potentially a World War I hatchet. And so, I like its old-fashioned appearance. And I'm not sure how I'm going to go about restoring it. I don't want to do a heavy restore on it. I want to keep this as much as it is. But maybe just rehang this. Uh, I, I, I kind of like it as it is, but I do want to have it have a usefulness, but at best I'll use it, I'll give it mild use, just because I think it's so cool. This one, uh, the handles, as I said, gave them an oiling. I'll have to reset them though, so that they're stable, and this will have to be sharpening or sharpened. The guy wanted 15, I said no way, not by half. I'll give you 15, I'll give you 8. And he scratched his chin and he gave it to me. $8. I like that it's, it has a sort of homemade quality. It looks like a rather, well, I'm, I'm just a novice, I'm an outsider to this, but uh, it looks as though a blacksmith made turned a file type thing into a draw knife. I don't know. I don't know what its history is. But it's got some use on it and I need it for debarking my one of my next projects. Mrs. Pocket was nearly floored with surprise when she saw these. She said, you, you took a before shot, didn't you? I said, no, I didn't. I can't. I can't videotape all of it. Uh, it just slows the process down too much. But these looked completely trashed. Got it for five dollars, and I had just bought a fiberglass one from Walmart for something like twenty-seven dollars, and it was still. It, it hadn't been. I didn't even use it yet, so we instantly took it back. This for five dollars restored. No comparison as far as I'm concerned. Uh, these Maddox. This one is a, whoa. This one is, I think they call it a cutter Maddox. So I gave it an I gave it an edge. This the handle is killed, but it has a nasty split too. But uh, I'm going to use it until it breaks. It was as I've said, it's just not that difficult to restore a handle, and, uh, you know, I just use it cautiously. If it breaks, I replace it. This was pricey. Five bucks. She didn't want to budge, and I accepted it solely on the basis that it had an ed it could easily have, or have an edge put on it, and I need it for knocking away beech saplings. And so far it's been nice to use. It's a nice tool. The, the crooked handle is awful, but I'm growing accustomed to it, and eventually I'll replace it. But as a trial run to see if I like the tool or not, yeah, it, it's, it's a must-have. It was worth the five bucks. It will be worth a further investment of a handle to make it even better. But now I, I want to show you the, the best of the bunch. This is the best two dollars I've spent at the flea market ever. <laughs> two dollars. There are zero splits in it. 
that aren't superficial and the handle's barley. But I did I did put some epoxy in here where there was heavy wear, just to keep the moisture away. This is a different this is a different design. The head goes that way to wedge on as opposed to the more traditional handle wedge and you can understand why this is, this Matic is heavy and I wasn't certain about it but the two dollar price I couldn't I just had to go on I had to move on it for two dollars but it turns out that it's just spectacular for digging uh, we already even though it's way too early it's only the beginning of April we already tilled a plot with this and prepped a garden put some biochar in the bottom of a bed uh, and de-rocked it and this was really useful for that also I used it to rip apart a rather nasty root ball stump slash pile of old rotten wood and it just mauls through material like It's a beast. I also just picked up a few planes at the last flea market that I went to, but that's enough for now. I would like to say, I would like to state an opinion though on flea marketing in general. Aside from the fact that it's enjoyable because you can find stuff like this, and there's an incredible satisfaction to be had from getting a older tool that has some mysterious history to it and there's a beauty the patina of the metal and the, and the uh, aged look of the old hickory I, I like that it's strange it has a bizarre appeal to me but there's a social aspect to the flea market that I find has value as well and if, if Depending on how well you know me, you might see me as a bit cynical or misanthropic. And yeah, I, I have those tendencies. But nevertheless, I meet some of those old men and they, they if, if you listen, they like to catch the ear of a younger man. And they have interesting stories to tell. And I have wonderful conversations with them, and there's this conversational equivalence that takes place where we respect each other. And I know what I'm willing to spend, and I, I lay it out there honestly, and they know what they're willing to accept, and they lay it out there honestly. And it doesn't become, a re it's not a relationship that's full, filled with tension. There's actually a, a, a sort of refreshing honesty to it if that makes sense, where here's my offer, you know, and nothing personal, take it or leave it. And I really like that sort of honesty of interaction. It, it's kind of refreshing in, in a world that seems so filled with deceit and, and, and hidden motives. I'm there to get a a tool that I can fix for a good deal. And you're there to sell your junk to, and get as much much money for it, for it as you can. And we're going to meet in the, in the middle somewhere where it's mutually beneficial. I think, especially to those of you who might be socially awkward, have some type of aversion to communication with other people, it's a great way to engage in low commitment relationships that that do have a spark of meaning like you can go away from there with a warm feeling in your stomach from the the friendly exchanges that you have with some of those weirdos <laughs> and myself being one of them I'm not exempt I admittedly I am one of the weirder of the varieties that you'll find at the flea market. But nevertheless, uh, I encourage you to get out there and hit the flea market this season. But, uh, that's enough talk for now. See you later.